This video will show how we deal with the carry that results from the addition of binary numbers. We can see we have three registers, register A, register B and the result register. Within register A you can see we have this byte, within register B we have this byte and we're going to add them up and we're going to store the result in this register. So let's consider this column here. And you can see I've got 1 plus 1, which is 2, which means it's 0 down and we carry 1. We then add up these three numbers, which takes into account the carry. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is 1 down and carry 1. We then perform the addition of this column, which is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, which is 1 down and carry 1. We then perform this addition here, and of course that's also 3, which is 1 down and carry 1. We then perform this addition, which is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, which is 1 down and carry 1. We then add up this column, which is again 1 down, carry 1. We then add these three ones up, which is obviously 3, which is 1 down and carry 1. And then we add up this column here, which is 0 plus 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is 0 down and carry 1. Now we can see that the addition has resulted in this carry here. Now there is no room for that in this register, because the result is in fact a 9-bit result from the two 8-bit registers that we've added up. Now what do we do with this? Here. If there's no room for it to go in this register, what do we need to do with it? Let's take a closer look at the contents of the various registers. I'll move them to one side, giving myself some room to the right of the slide. And I'm now going to consider the contents of the first register, register A. And I can see that when I work that out, it's worth 127 in our number system. If I look at register B, that I know that is 255. If I now add up 127 to 255, I would expect the results to be 382. Now the result of the addition will be stored in the result register. Let's take a look at the byte that's stored within it, and I'm highlighting that in yellow. Now if I convert that to our number system, Deanery, what we will see is that the result is 126, and that is clearly not 382. Let's take a closer look at the result register, and we can see that this byte has given us the value of 126, whereas we know it should be 382 from the work we've done on the previous slides. Now, the reason it's not giving us 382 is we have not taken note of this carry here. If we were to move that carry to a position where it should be, and I'm going to highlight that in yellow here, then all of this will give us 382. The trouble is there isn't any room for this in this one byte register. If we did, however, take note of this carry bit and put it at the front of the byte that you see in front of you, then we would indeed find when we did the calculation of converting it to our number system that we get 382. So what we have to do, or what you have to ensure that the computer does for us, is to make arrangements to include this. Now, how is that achieved? Well, I'm going to look at one of the methods in a moment, but a possibility is you could store the result in a bigger register, in a 16-bit register. But I'm going to show you how this can be achieved by storing it in consecutive memory locations. I've returned to the slide that shows you the state of all of the registers after the addition has been performed. And you can see that I have this carry in this position. Again, let's concentrate on the result register and the carry. And ask the question, 
what do we do with the carry that I've highlighted with the question mark and the arrow? Within the central processing unit of a computer, there is an arithmetic and logic unit. Now, this will perform calculations such as addition, and that's been illustrated in this video. Now, the results of the numbers we've been adding up here have given us a 9-bit result, and that's too big to go into an 8-bit register. So the arithmetic and logic unit will place this carry into an appropriate flag, and I'm showing that happening now. And the flag is just a flip-flop. It's something that's capable of storing a 1 or a 0. Now, in the case of the addition we've just seen, there was a carry, so one is put into this flag. If there was no carry, then this flag would hold zero. Now I'm going to move this out of the way so I can make room for two memory locations that will form part of the computer system I'm concerned with for this video. And I'm going to show the computer memory here. And what we have, we have memory locations, two of them, one following another, and you can see each memory location is capable of storing a byte. If I have a look at this byte, that is storing this flag. And the flag appears here, and these zeros pad out the byte. So it's seven zeros, one. And the computer will know to do this. We don't have to worry about it. This will be done by the machine code. So when you decide to store this flag in a memory, it sticks all these zeros here. Have a look at the result register and its content, and you can see that is stored here. Consequently, the 9-bit answer has been stored across two consecutive memory locations. The result of the addition we have seen in this video creates a 9-bit result. The most significant bit of that result is here in the flag. The remaining eight bits are here. So what in effect we've done, we've stored a nine bit result across two consecutive memory locations. Now, if you consider the place value of this, it's worth two. This is four, eight, 16, 32, 64. And the place value of this is 128. Now it doesn't have anything in it, but the place value is 128. So the place value of this is 256, if you imagine you had a 9-bit register. So this here, which are the seven zeros and the one, this one is worth more in terms of its place value than all of these ones added up. So this is said to be the high value byte, and this is said to be the low value byte. So when we store in a memory as shown here, we have high byte, low byte storage. Now, different microprocessors store values differently. I'm going to show you another organization of memory now, which is shown on this slide. We've still got the same 9-bit result, which is this flag and these 8 bits here. But if you look, the result stored in this register is placed here. And this is the lower byte, whereas the flag which is worth more in terms of its position value, is stored here with all these zeros padding it out. So this is an example of a low byte, high byte storage. And the previous one was high byte, low byte. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.